With is a 2 HP module from Whimsical Raps, which provides three different engines for traversing the present moment. It was first introduced in March 2018 as a history navigator, providing eight hours of digital tape for looping, jump cuts, and playback manipulation. While With 1.0 was an exciting foray into sketchbook-style sampling, its 2.0 firmware represents a fresh start, extending the playability and immediacy of the original's most loved elements into three modes, or engines. This video will focus on the tape engine, which strips the original firmware to its live looping essentials. Three hours of virtual space to capture performances and sonic vignettes with full Verispeed control, even while recording. To select the tape engine, we'll enter the launcher by holding record, then play, then loop, in that order, until the LEDs at the top of the module start flashing. The current engine is indicated by the yellow LED, which has a unique flashing pattern per selection. We can select a new engine with each button. Loop gives us delay, play gives us synth, and record gives us tape. We'll hit record to queue up our engine change to tape, and we'll hold the toggle at the top of the module down until the lights charge up and flash. Now we're in the tape engine. Tape allows histories to be manipulated in a performative style. It provides a three-hour loop of virtual tape to record into, so you can think of it as a giant blank canvas to layer upon, without any discrete start or end. In this video, we're starting fresh, so let's connect a sound source and record some audio. I'll patch the hollow output of Mangrove to Wits in jack. Notice that the LEDs above this jack come alive when a signal is patched in. By default, with automatically passes the audio present at in to out. But just in case, you can adjust the monitor level by simultaneously holding loop and play. Then you can adjust the wet dry balance with the toggle. Notice the LED indicator movement as we change the level. Since tape is designed with live looping in mind, let's start by recording a loop. Looping is independent of recording. So let's enable record and hit loop to set a start point. To get the tape moving, we hit play, which will start recording. When we want to loop the recorded audio, hit loop again and record will automatically disable. Now, our recorded audio is looping underneath our live signal. If we only want to hear the recorded audio, we can adjust the monitor level again with our simultaneous loop and play gesture. We can jump to the start of our loop by pressing loop. The LEDs above loop reflect the playhead's proximity from loop start to loop end. To change our playback speed, we hold play and use the toggle. Up will double the speed, and down will have it. If we don't hold play, and we simply manipulate the toggle, we can still influence playback. Up will momentarily speed up to a perfect fifth if held, and down will momentarily slow down to a perfect fourth if held. If we hold the toggle and press play, we can change the playback direction. Up and play will get us forward motion, and down and play will get us reverse. Note that the LED above play changes sides depending on direction. Hit play to stop playback. Notice that our loop is still active. 
While in the stop state, we can use the toggle to manually scrub the loop. Hold the toggle up to fast forward, and hold the toggle down to rewind. We can also quickly scale our loop's length by holding loop and flicking the toggle. Up will double the length, and down will have it. Scaling takes the playhead's current position into account, allowing micro loops on demand. When manipulating loop scaling, the LED at the top of the module gives a sense of the original loop length's multiplication or division. And finally, you can release a loop by holding loop. Recording seems like it's a simple on-off, but its style can be modified. When record is held, the toggle changes the strength of the erase head. Up moves toward overwrite style, and down moves toward overdub style. Overwriting means you replace the existing audio with your input, whereas overdub means you add the input audio on top of what's already there. There's lots of fun between these two extremes. The erase style is shown above the toggle while record is held. The yellow light above record also indicates the strength of the erase head. As the brightness increases, the erase head is more active, clearing more and more of past recordings. For this example, we'll start with the erase head strength at zero, giving us a full overdub style. This lets us continuously layer manipulations of an enveloped oscillator into a two-second loop. You can swap from overdub to full overwrite by holding record and holding the toggle up. Now we can press record to inject moments of silence into our loop. Notice that pressing record in this overwrite mode immediately mutes the playback. This is because Width is currently set up as a sketch machine where we only hear the effects of the overwrite and not what we're replacing. So since we're overwriting the recorded material with silence, we hear silence as soon as we record it to the sketch. We can change this behavior, however. If we simultaneously hold loop and record, the LEDs show whether our playhead is behind the record head or in front of the record head. The default state for the playhead is behind the record head, but by flipping the toggle up, we can activate echo mode, which allows the first echo of the material to play at full volume. We can demonstrate this by creating a short loop and setting the erase strength to near full, which puts us closer to overwrite. In sketchbook mode, we hear a little echo as the record head passes over the existing audio at the current high erase strength. When we switch to echo mode, the record head allows the first echo to play back unaffected, which adds another dimension to the resulting delayed cascade.
With also supports CV control over six different parameters through the this and that inputs. Each input is assigned separately, and each have the same destination options. To enter the destination selector, hold record while inserting a cable into either this or that. We can choose the destination parameter by different combinations of the three buttons, flicking the toggle down to confirm our choice. If we don't want to change the current assignment, we can just flick the toggle up to cancel. Let's press loop and flick the toggle down to confirm. In this mode, we can clock loop recording from an external CV pulse. In this video, we'll use a simple Crow script to demonstrate. We tap play to get things rolling, and tap record to arm recording. After we tap loop, with will wait for CV pulse to set the loop start. When with receives another external pulse, it'll set the loop end and stop recording. Unless we clear the loop, any subsequent CV pulses will simply jump playback to the start of the loop. There are two modes available for CV control over playback. If the LED is yellow, incoming CV will be added to the current speed. So if the tape is stopped and the speed is zero, incoming CV acts as a fast forward and rewind. If the tape is playing, incoming CV creates vibrato and FM effects. If the LED is white, incoming CV will be scaled one volt per octave through exponential multiplication of the current rate. This lends itself well to sequencing single note recordings into full melody lines, but it can also be interesting to employ when recording. This mode provides CV control over the record level. At zero volts, no recording or erasing occurs. As the voltage fades up to five volts, record level is increased to full, and the erase strength reaches whatever the panel's erase strength is set to. 
Zero volts down into the negative regions behaves the same as positive, except fades to the opposite erase strength. So if your erase strength setting is overdub, negative voltages will approach overwrite. These controls have unique results in sketchbook mode versus echo mode, so be sure to try both. Here, we're in sketchbook mode. We can use a positive 5-volt gate signal as a momentary overdub record gate. And a negative 5-volt gate signal as a momentary overwrite record gate. This can be a fun collage tool if monitoring is muted. The loop and play mode provides CV control over the monitor level, where incoming voltage is added to the current value. This can be used as a creative sound design tool as it doesn't affect what's recorded. This final mode provides CV control over the delay send, which is the level at which the incoming audio hits the record head. This can be used to fine-tune the record level independent from the overdub and overwrite settings, but it's also a nice control alongside monitor level manipulations. I2C, or II, is a flexible communication protocol which allows modules to send commands to each other digitally, which opens up possibilities that patch cables can't facilitate. For tips on getting your I2C bus set up, check out the walkthrough linked in this video's description. With tape has an extensive I2C implementation, allowing for many extended techniques not practicable or even possible via the front panel. All of the available commands are outlined in the with wiki, but keep in mind that each host module, like monomes, teletype, and crow, may have different implementation or formatting for these commands. You should check out each host's docs for more information.
With tape is a celebration of muscle memory, and it rewards persistence with persistence. With a little bit of time, with tape moves from a looper to a full instrument, a hall of mirrors multiplying in and on reflections.